Hi, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the on screen display of the TX NR515. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do with the 515 is actually controlling it. Now, for the OSD and many of the functions, using the actual supplied manufacturer's remote control is the best way to do this. Make sure it's in receiver mode first, then pressing the home button will actually take you to an on screen display. And then from there, you can use the nav buttons up, down, left and right to actually go to the particular part of the menu where you want to go. So first up on the input output sign is the monitor out. This allows you to set the resolution and whether you want the signal outputted on the main or the sub HDMI out, or indeed if you want both outputs active at the same time. Then if you want to, you can change the resolution mode from automatic or alternatively, you can run through all of the other video standards running from interlaced or progressive, or you can actually set it to through. And this will leave the signal untouched and pass straight through the receiver and then on towards the screen or whichever display you're actually using. Now, the rest of the selections are all to do with the assignments of the inputs, whether it be HDMI, component, or digital. And when I say digital, I mean coaxial or optical. You assign them to a specific input, and it's as easy as that. Next up is the speaker setup. Now, if you've used the auto mic setup, everything in here should have been pre-done. It's always advisable to go back into this menu just to make sure that the audio has done everything it needs to do and it's done it correctly, as in for the distance and the crossover settings. Here we're running through the actual crossover points of all of the speakers and it has detected whether there are or aren't speakers in the particular setup. The audio adjust menu allows you to make minor adjustments to the Dolby or DTS processing. Also, this is where you make changes for how a mono signal is processed and also Onkyo's theatre dimensional processing is actually catered for. Now, in the source setup, these features are specific to each individual source. So we have the Intelli volume, the AV sync, name edit, the picture adjust, which allows you to do some form of picture calibration, and more importantly, the audio selector. And this is where you would assign a digital input to an HDMI picture source, if necessary. So for example, a Skybox using the HDMI for the picture, you would then go into the audio selector and set the optical or the coaxial to receive the 5.1. Now the listening mode preset is again per particular input and it allows you to actually set up a particular DSP processing mode dependent on the signal that the actual receiver is seeing. So for example, if you want ProLogic 2Z to be activated every time it sees a true HD signal, it will actually set a specific DSP. So for this example, I'm going to select PL2X movie when it sees any type of Dolby signal. So when you play a DVD or a Blu-ray or a satellite transmission, every time it sees a Dolby signal, it's going to automatically select PL2X movie. And as I said previously, these can be independent on each individual input. So for example, on a game, you can actually set a lot of the game DSP modes when you're using your PS3 or your Xbox 360. And the miscellaneous section allows you to adjust how you see and how you interact with the volume. And then you have the on-screen display setup. And in the OSD setup, one of the nice features is actually the screensaver, which means there's no more need to worry about plasma displays getting burning. A few more new features can be found in the hardware setup. The tuner section allows the changing of the frequency steps, but actually inside the HDMI menu, this is where we can set the RIHD control, which is CEC, HDMI through, and the audio return as well as lip sync and the new Insta preview. This function allows you to see what's going on on other inputs without having to switch over and losing what you're watching right there and then. In the HDMI setup, you can actually select whether you want the windows on the top, on the bottom or on either side. So it's actually very, very flexible in how it displays the information to you. Also, you have the ability to turn the auto standby on or off, change your network settings, and then you actually have the override for initial setup, so you can start again. 
Now in the remote controller setup, we have the ability to change the IDs so you don't get crosstalk between different Onkyo amplifiers and also the remote mode setup. So this is the place where you need to come if you want to start to program the Onkyo remote control to be able to control other devices. All the information is given to you on screen, so you just need to follow the prompts through to set up the remote control and you'll be able to set your remote up to control other devices. And then lastly, we have the lock option. This allows you to lock all the settings so they don't accidentally get changed without you knowing about it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on the TXNR515 and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.